All right, so I just quickly ran a search, opened up the day one journal, ran a search for Joe, and this is what popped up here. This one is from May 16th, 2014, and David writes, Joe Seaton is in town. It's been fun connecting again. This week I met with Danny too. So this is kind of the first time where Joseph Seaton is uh, popped up into David's life. And uh, so, obviously nothing wrong with that a little coincidental i think with this knowing um what we know about joseph seaton and his hollywood aspirations and things like that too but um and the timing because this is right around the time when david is um pitching the gray state script to hollywood right around that time so all of a sudden joe seaton shows up you can see the image that we have of david and joe seaton together and didn't really think too much of it at the time. Even when I saw Joseph Seaton in the sloppy mentor, I didn't really think too much of it. Like, okay, you know, a soldier. It's good to have a soldier um, kind of give their view. But we have uh, this soldier, at least this one soldier. You know, think of all the soldiers that serve with David. And how many of you out there really believe David Crowley is guilty? And based on what, too? Just because you were told it or based on evidence that you've seen what evidence could that possibly be when the documents clearly show that there is no evidence to <laughs> prove david crowley guilty it's one thing to think it right you're free to think whatever you want but let's be responsible adults here and let's not just go by our feelings right if we go by our feelings that's going to tell us what. if i were to go by my feelings i would think david crowley is guilty i started this whole thing with the con with the assumption um, looking for the conclusions that would show me why David Crowley is guilty. It just does not exist, people. It's in the documents. You can clearly see that they found no motive, no reason in this day one journal that would lead them to understand why they believe David did what he did. So you got you to gotta go with that, too. You look at the DNA results, and you can see how little they connect him to the, to the crime scene. <laughs> Right? No blood on any of the bullets. David's blood is not on any of the bullets found. How the heck can that be if he committed suicide in that living room or in the house or anywhere? There should be a, a, a some bullet, at least one bullet, should have his blood on it, if not more, and it doesn't. So the gun doesn't. Uh, they weren't able to tie him to the handwriting uh, in the living in the uh, in the office bedroom. Right? They were able to tie it to the to the to the uh, pin, I, I believe. Um, just David's left middle finger again. Left hand, I believe David's right hand did here. The gun was by his left hand. We know David shoots with his right hand, on and on and on. You look at where the gun landed, and it's kind of weird if it's on the right side. You follow the trajectory of where the exit wound from what's left of his head is. And, you know, you start building all these things and it all, you can clearly see, and these are all things that the sloppy mentry doesn't cover. These are all things that the people who believe David Crowley is guilty, they don't cover this stuff. They don't want you looking at the real evidence, the real documents. They want to just play on your feelings. So looking at this, um, I just wanted to see, okay, what is the relationship with Joseph Seaton and David Crowley? And then some of the quotes that David leaves also have to do with other people too, not just joseph seaton so we'll continue to cover that as well but this is just the one from may 16th 2014 and here is one from june 22nd 2014 and david writes earlier he's writing to himself right earlier you were hanging out with danny and joe at joe's place so hanging out with joe at joe's apartment um that's what he was doing on june 22nd he says lots going on and it's all chaos hard to keep track of god i hope this deal pans out so he's really hoping that this deal pans out and it's really interesting that all of a sudden now you know he and danny um and joseph seaton are all in the same place after we know that david has secured this uh, actual option so the option is done right we can see that david posts about that on facebook that is in in my book one of the last chapters the gray stage the gray shame chapter which does pretty much that chapter at the end of my book does pretty much cover all of david's social media posts etc etc i wish i would have had this journal stuff in there back then i would have added a lot of this probably to it and who knows i may go back and revise my my book and uh add some of this stuff um 
that I believe is is really relevant, especially the stuff where you know, I mean, we had always kind of assumed different things about his relationship with Sean Wright, with Joseph Seaton. We knew about the thing with Danny Mason, but you get a lot of the hard evidence here to really uh, back that up that the relationship with um, David and these guys was not really good. So here's what he says, hard to keep track of, gotta hope this deal pans out. Seems to be all that's on my mind. How can this not be stressful? I mean, that's a very that's a very good question. How could it not be stressful to be going through all this and you have these guys, you know, all of a sudden Joseph Seaton is, is back here. The issue with Danny Mason, how is he gonna secure this rights deal and all this stuff. It, even though uh, the Mikes, Michael, Boggio had made it clear he's like I, I he didn't know anything about you know David trying to get Danny Mason to sign away anything or to sign any any paperwork didn't seem like it was relevant to Mike Boggio so David may have been doing all that for for nothing you know maybe he should have not even said anything and just kind of let the things roll out but he got with his lawyer they were trying to cover all basis etc cetera, etc cetera. And we see, you know, the whole fallout of everything that happens. It strains the relationship between uh, David and Danny and between a lot of David and a lot of other people, as we're going to see as we read on here. So continuing on, on May, I'm sorry, continuing on uh, June 25th, Wednesday, June 25th, 2014 at 12.55 a.m., he writes, Sometimes it's hard to understand the things I know. I know what I said. Danny and Joe are sucking me dry. There ain't even, there ain't never enough I can throw at these people that they won't demand more. Like everyone in the whole state is a fat charity case I have to sustain forever because they all see my promise, energy, direction, and drive. Leeches. He doesn't say leeches, I said leeches. You can, I'm sure you're seeing that. And they need it. This is the essence of objective, objectivism. Anne ran. I have economy of supply. They of demand. Analyze relationships. Most stay away. The few who make contact hover. So that's just one of the things that he wrote there on June 20, 25th. But he feels that Danny and Joe are sucking him dry, you know, and they, they, there's never enough that he can do for them. And like everyone in the state, Minnesota, so a lot of other people in Minnesota, um, is a fat charity case. I have to sustain forever because they all see my promise, energy, direction, and drive they need it so they need it so when he's distancing himself from these people and they need it from his words so he sees you know um that they're pretty much um they need him he doesn't really need them so when he's moving away from them and pushing away from them you can clearly see what the result of that is they need it you know um so he says, analyze relationships, most stay away. The few who make contact hover. So they're hovering, they're hovering. It's like, you know, they should be doing their own thing. They should be working on their own thing. And he feels like they're just kind of riding his coattails. That's, a, that's the way that I read this too. But let me know what you think. Okay, and then here is, here is another part from the same day, June 25th. And he says, then I keep her up all night, talking about Kamel, chatting about new revelations. Here are a few. Danny and Joe are not meant to be your lifelong bosom buddies. I don't need their desperate, clingy energies on me. I'm supposed to be going there this morning, but it took a wrench of will to realize I don't want to and probably shouldn't be wasting my time with them for so many reasons. All they do is wonder what I'm up to and pitch to me their rehashed version of a gray state oriented workout boot camp that I had in mind all along. Fine, fine. Let's talk a little bit about that before we move on here. Um, 
I mean, he's, he's, he's getting these feelings, these instincts. And you always trust your instincts with this stuff that, you know, they're desperate, clingy energies. They're not meant to be your lifelong buddies. He's clearly distancing himself from these guys. And Joe just came back. Joe is just back in town. All of a sudden, it didn't take long for David, maybe a month, to really realize, man, this is not... This is not someone that I really want in my life. And obviously he's feeling the same with Danny Mason, which is kind of strange because he's known Danny Mason for, for years, but obviously watch any interview with David and Danny Mason and you can clearly see there is tension, there's rift, there's, there's something, it's subtle, it's there though, it's there. So there is a lot of information that I believe is there. I mean, you may not agree with that, you may think differently, but that's, the way that I look at some of this stuff here so the interviews all that stuff is very important and um, you can clearly see this is just more stuff where David is pushing away June 25th you know he's like he's realizing this and he's still gonna be dealing with these guys too it's this, this is not over this is not the end of dealing with these guys but said it took a wrench of will to realize I don't want to I, you know he's supposed to be going there probably supposed to meet with um, Danny and, and Joe and he said, you know, they're pitching him ideas. He's waste. He feels like he's wasting his time for so many reasons, not just one or two reasons. But all they do is wonder what I'm up to. So they're, you know, they're picking his brain. They're hovering, right? They're just, they want to be there. They want to be a part of this thing. They're leeching off of it and not really doing their own thing. But they want to ride what he's doing. And it's like, you know, um, a while ago. Catherine, Sophia, and I, we were discussing on one of our live shows, and I was like, man, if these guys would have just, you know, just let David do his thing, uh, they all would have kind of profited from it. And I think Catherine and Sophia dis disagreed with that. And reading some of the stuff in the Day One Journal, I think they were absolutely right that, you know, I had always thought, man, if they just keep their mouth shut and they can ride David's coattails, you can clearly see David is already trying, by June 25th, he's already trying to get these guys off of his coattails, to wipe them off of his shoulder, wipe the dust from your feet before you leave, you know? There's a bad taste that these guys are putting in his mouth, and he's, he's wasted on them. His time, he feels like, is wasted, and he should not be connecting with these guys. So... He still does, and you can see it's almost reluctant, pity, whatever you want to call it. But uh, then he says, all they do is wonder what I'm up to and pitch me their rehash version of a gray state oriented workout boot camp. So, you know, it's like we hear all this time, oh, David was, you know, all about the money and for the money. There's a lot of things that David could have done if he wanted to just be about the money when it came to gray state, and he didn't do it. Um, there was a vision he had a clear vision for what he wanted here and that's what i see here all this is just more proof of that so let's go on um where he says uh it's, it's fine fine i'll hire you but they're not talking about hiring no it's some kind of implied inclusion into my energy they want so there i mean that is a big big thing big big thing they want to be a part of this they feel like they're entitled to be a part of this if you read this the way that david is right the way that i read what david is saying here it's some kind of implied inclusion into my energy they want adam jumping up and down waving his big monkey arms <laughs> willing your my meal ticket selling your my meal ticket sean says for 50k a year i can have him <laughs> to work and build sets for 50k a year for what why would you hire that guy for anything? I wouldn't hire it. I wouldn't hire that guy to clean my shoes, man. <laughs> but I think David kind of realized that too. And David was much more closer uh, with Sean Wright than I than I ever was. But my dealings with Sean Wright, and I've talked with other people and their dealings, you know, very very shady stuff. And it seemed like David knew that a long time before a lot of us did. So that is another little tidbit this is all from this is still from june 25th there's a few things here from june 25th um and so he says <laughs> that's just funny though i mean um so again the adam i don't know if he's talking about adam his lawyer or if he's talking about adam shambauer it's not really clear um 
But if he's talking about Adam Shambar, man, that's four guys there that are in the sloppy mentory that all believe David Crowley is guilty that he is distancing himself from. And is, is already knows that they are trying to feed off of his energy. Adam even says, you're my meal ticket to David. Who does that? You know? Whichever Adam it is. Um, <laughs> but Sean's saying for 50k a year, I can have him to work and build sets. 50k a year? Man, get a real job. <laughs> and here's what David says. Why is it my responsibility to carry all these people? Jesus, I'm sick of the burden being responsible for so many people's future. Yeah, everybody needs to be responsible for their own future, right? Get your own thing. I mean, have, you know, have something that you can bring to the table, not just uh, something where you can, um, you know, you're making a deal or making some type of offer where you're still leeching off of David, you know? Like a guy like Zach Carter was able to bring something to the table. Uh, a lot of other people, I'm sure, were able to bring something to the table. Or else, there is no table. <laughs> there is nothing there for you. So it's just, that is... Um, so here's another one. So another thing that he writes, still on June 25th. So he's writing to himself, go to the West Coast, make new friends. So go to the West Coast, man. He's headed to California. He is headed to L. He is L.A. bound. He is not... Um, planning on staying in Minnesota and heading to another state by the way is also more evidence of not planning to kill yourself and kill your family just want to throw that out there it seems pretty clear to me at least I mean, that's more evidence why I would think wait a minute he's heading out to LA and then all of a sudden he decides not to go and you know does what uh, what everybody else pretty much wants him to stay in Minnesota and kill his kill his family he decides to kill his family and kill himself it doesn't make any sense he's headed to california you can see the resistance from a lot of these goons he's dancing with goons here and that's never a good thing um, never a good thing uh, he still has pity for them though you know he's still he doesn't see them as like you know evil people or bad people he really has more pity for them than anything he says go to the west coast make new friends clear all these yucky marriages to everyone who ever gave you a hand on the film boom cutting them all out done you know yucky marriages get rid of the yucky one not the bad not the good ones but just the bad ones they need to find their own lives and that is really true you need to clear out and make room for new relationships. So out with the old, in with the new. You know, get the yucky stuff off, put on a new new pair of clothes, and walk down to the West Coast, to L.A. He's Hollywood bound. But he does say they're nice people, really good people, but they aren't helping you. Right? They're not contributing. They're leeching, you know, offering. <laughs> offering their cost if David wants to uh, hire them or you know be a, uh, associated with them or whatever but you know they're not really bringing their own thing they're pitching to him the way that uh, David would be pitching to a Hollywood producer so why, why would David need that why would he need them for that he's already in that spot you know so he's going to do all of, of the work make all of the deals and they're just going to come along for the ride like his entourage or something no you could clearly see he sees exactly where this is going he's 10 steps ahead of, of these guys when it comes to that stuff and clearly sees what they're doing and they need to get their own lives they need to do their own thing he needs to clear out clear them out and make room for new relationships pretty powerful stuff and another good one is from august 9th uh, right before Ronya's birthday party and he says about the birthday party Dan uh, Danny is coming I have to convince him to sign away an empire Sean is coming with his kid and he gets to ask me why he's not allowed to live here Sean's still trying to I mean leeching it's like god man get your own job get your own place and take care of yourself don't rely on other people to take care of you and he says what a week he also says Joe is coming and that mother effer is so frat boy stupid, so monstrously, monstrously lost, 
and transparent and happily oblivious to his own spectacle. That last week I wept for him. So this guy's just so clueless, no self-awareness, uh, nothing like that. And, uh, it, you know, to the point where you know, David is just like, you know, he, he wept for him. He cried. So we say, oh, David was crying about the crying about that. He, he cries for these guys too. <laughs> Uh, some of his words, and he's talking about Joseph Seaton here, some of his words were so far from understanding that I folded my hands and wept tears for him in a moment of total clarity and consideration for his tiny mind. Again, that is um, on August 9th, he's, he's writing that. So it's just like the more he's dealing with Joseph Seaton, the more he realizes, man, this guy is just completely lost. Frat boy stupid. Um oblivious to his own spectacle doesn't even realize you know what he's doing and and just it's hard to be around people like that you know especially when David it's the guy that David served with and everything and then this guy is going to turn turn around and accuse David of this monstrous crime and not be able to back it up not be able to provide any evidence and just and probably try to probably throw Kamel in there too so I mean, it's just it's just crazy the way some people try to not only, you know, talk about David, but talk about David's wife and everything. I'm surprised they didn't blame Branya for the whole thing at this point, right? But the whole thing is, man, believe whatever you want, but at least have some facts to back it up, not just your feelings. Your oblivious, stu stupid feelings. Anyways, um, so that's what... He writes there, David writes on August 9th. All right, and then we have August 11th, 2014. And he says, this is the morning after Rania's party. It was good. She was good. Everything was kind of as we called it. But a few happy and a few nasty surprises. Joe is a douchebag, as I put it. An asshole that doesn't know it's an asshole. <laughs> Um, so he doesn't really elaborate too much on that, but it's just, you know, I thought I would throw that in there. He's trying to find anything about Joe Seaton, and you can see there's just, this is just bad stuff. Very bad stuff. Nothing good is happening here. And we, we're going to talk a little bit about the way that it ends later from Joe's side, which he does not mention in the sloppy mentry. Um, I don't know. I mean... Who knows how long they interviewed him. But it's just weird that they would even interview this guy. All the only people they interviewed, the people that David had issues with. <laughs> except for me and Dan, probably, you know. Um, who else was talking positive about David Crowley? We didn't know the guy. Right? And then you can clearly see, like, where is this side? Where is the side from the Day One Journal? You know? Who's talking about that? Who was on David's side saying, man, these guys were assholes. These guys had no idea what they were doing they were clueless they were leeching off of david where was that point of view you know they had the document they had it all there so it was just like they wanted to do a counter to that knowing that one day we would probably get this so but he calls him a douchebag an asshole who doesn't know it's an asshole i mean <laughs> doesn't get any more um get any more weird than than that but you know overall it sounded like it was a big pleasant thing with him with he and his family so that's good but um so you can see joseph seaton did something again that uh frustrated david or irritated david at the very least all right again that is um august 11th the day after the party so we have the day before the day after and then next we'll look at the um the end of David and Joseph Seaton's relationship via a text from Joseph Seaton to David Crowley. And another name that seems to come up a lot now is Joseph Seaton ever since he was seen in um, Eric Nelson's film A Gray State. Been some questions about Eric Seaton. Was he really, was he David's commander? Did he serve? Obviously he served with them. What was his rank? All that good stuff. So, um, the way that Joseph Seaton, you know, talks about David is not really in a very good light. Um, and he is another one that just assumes that David Crowley is guilty. And so doesn't really offer, you know, any evidence or anything like that. It's just more of this weird innuendo or whatever you want to call it, speculation. 
So let's read here. This is on page 155 of David Crowley's journal. This is from Friday, October 17th, 2014. He says, um, beyond that, I got a text from Joe. Quote, we made beautiful music together. Goodbye, Dave. This pigeon head is butt hurt, but I haven't responded to his text. Oh, this pigeon head is butt hurt. I haven't responded to his text. He's a single asshole living alone with no job, family, or possessions. What does he imagine we have in common? So here you have another guy that David is critical of that ends up in Eric Nelson's slumpumentary film for whatever reason. Um, where's all the good people, you know, that knew David that don't believe that he's guilty? Why don't we see those people in Eric Nelson's film? Well, I'm sure you can sure you can imagine why they only put certain people in there you know um i'm my guess is if david crowley's family um and kamel's family thought that david was was not guilty they probably wouldn't be in the sloppy mentry I mean, we know that kamel's family isn't but uh that whole thing was laid out weird. It's, it's a very one-sided film. So it's good to see stuff like this in here because you're getting it directly from David Crowley, right? And it's it's possible Joseph Seaton saw this. This could have influenced some of the things that Joseph Seaton said after reading this, after seeing this. But it sounds like Joseph Seaton doesn't make it very clear to the public that he ended the relationship with David here on uh, Friday, October 17th, 2014, in the early morning. So it was kind of weird the way Joseph Seaton just kind of showed up into David's life and then uh, lots of things happen and then he's gone, just like that. So he calls him a pigeon head um, and he says, but he's not responding to his text. It's not really clear why he's not. I think whatever happened earlier um, at Rania's party and all that stuff where we, when David called him a douchebag I think a lot of that obviously had to do with it but um, he says what what does he imagine we have in, in common you know he's got he's talking about Joseph Seaton he's single living by himself no job no family or possessions what does he imagine we have in common not much, 